in a moment of inspiration, where are you? You know, you're in, you're in several centuries at the same time. If you're doing a classical play, what century are you in? What thought are you having? I mean, it's, it's an unbelievable feeling. You know, the only thing that's as good as that is love, which also puts you in a cosmic sense where life is redefined for you. And this is what the artistic process is. When I was growing up, I was raised with the impression that almost any artistic process uh, was learning how to separate life from art. You would have this technique in which you would create something, and this technique was something that existed uh, outside of yourself in a way. It wasn't part of you. It was something that you had to learn. It wasn't, it wasn't uh, human in a way. It was something other than human. I would sometimes feel that I was less prepared because I said everyone else has this idea that when you start you should know exactly what you're gonna, where you're going to end up. And after a while I went, well, what, what's so great about knowing where you're going to end up? Any of the moments that I ever had that I liked in my own work always seemed to happen when I wasn't doing anything. I became deeply involved in, in some imaginary world and something would happen to me. I was not making something happen. It's the nature of the creative process. As you're creating something, it's teaching you something and you're actually, it forces you to focus on what it is you really want to do. So the more involved I became in the book, the more I had to say, well, what are you trying to say? I mean, you can't just write a book, what are you trying to say? I mean, if you're not teaching a method or a system, if it's not a cookbook, what is it? And that eventually did lead me to uh, discover the nine natural laws of creativity. Uh, it seems to me that uh, the way in which Johnny's work is different is that many uh, very good teachers even tend to teach by what I call by the numbers. It's like, you know, color between the lines. And a creative process isn't like that, so that even Johnny's nine natural laws are based not on some kind of rigid dogmatic thing and he obviously he doesn't go into a class and say okay now we're going to do law one law two law three what happens with a lot of teachers is that they become trapped by their own um uh the, you know by those those little boundaries you know the generation before me meaning my father and stella adler sandy meisner of course a lot of what they're teaching isn't in their methods because a lot of what they're teaching was their own dedication, their own obsession with their work, uh, their own artistic visions, so that the individual, the person, can't be separated from the technique. You just can't do that. In sense memory work, everything that you do is funneled through the idea that you do an exercise in order to tap into some of your own experience. And I say, well, why can't you just tap into their life experience? Why can't you go directly to the source? And the more that I felt that and the more that I understood the process, the more confirmed I became in, in, in a more organic way of training other people. Say if you were doing a scene and it's really hot, you know, you're, and, and you're out in the sunlight, that you would have to really imagine the sun. And you can't cheat by using one of the lights, you know. Um, I mean, that would be cheating if you really didn't imagine the sun. But, you know, but John would say, well, the scene's not about the sun, you know, beating down on you. It's okay to use the light if that, if that works for you. And that's the thing that I think he taught me. He said, it's whatever works for you. You make up your own method. An actor, when he begins, is already at a point that no other artist is at, meaning that however old you are, you have had a certain amount of life experience, and you have a knowledge and experience of life, which if you're going to be any good, you're going to have to be able to draw upon that. And that therefore training your own awareness and your capacity to use your own life experience is fundamentally basic technique. Certainly in an organic art artistic process, the most difficult thing for someone to do is to become involved. In other words, the world isn't, it's not real unless you become involved. It's like life isn't real if you don't become involved. And therefore, one has to remove 
anything that distances you from the fact that what you're trying to do is to live life. The first law you have to talk about is the law of talent because everything that you do is going to be based on your talent. I can't, that I can't emphasize enough, that, that probably the greatest strength in, in a really organic work process is your own presence and contact and your own perception of what you're doing. Talent is defined that way. I mean, if we're talking about what talent is, talent is the exceptional natural capacity to perceive reality and then the capacity to express that in a coherent form. It was something, for instance, that neither my father nor Stanislavski nor anybody that I know of had defined. You, you're about ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know you, you've been ready. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, it's so basic to anything that you're teaching anybody that I wonder why no one has defined it, why there hasn't been some effort to discover what talent is, because we're talking about it all the time. Okay, can we have a little quiet? The first scene is, is work on a monologue from Romeo and Juliet. Spread thy closed curtain, love, performing night. That runaway's eyes may wink. Fundamentally, an artist, for instance, is someone who has something to reveal about life. There's something that you know about life, whether you know it consciously or intuitively. And Romeo leaped to these arms. And great artists express that in their work. They have a very personal point of view. They very often have a philosophy of life. Um, and of course, no, whatever their philosophy is and whatever they produce is going to be based on what they are capable of perceiving and then what they're capable of expressing. Or if love be blind. <laughs> in order to develop it, it's very simple. You're, you have to be asking people, well, what is it that you perceive? about whatever it is that you're studying. Can we go back? Mm-hmm. Sure. You know why? Nope. No? Nope. Are you no. doing what you want to do? I'm trying. Is there anything in particular that you're either, uh, uh, that you're sensing? And we're going to work, so don't, yeah. so don't come out too far. You know, we're going to go back and do this, so. Okay. Don't ever stop when this is going on. Yeah. I mean, I always try to, you, you know me, I'm, so I, I'm always trying to get actors to, to learn to be able to collaborate and to work without feeling that if someone's talking to them, they, they stop doing what they're doing so that you don't get the feeling that it's, it's me or you and there's the enemy, which is a very dangerous attitude in a collaborative art form. Anyway. Yeah. It's um there's a there's a feeling in my body that that wants m more. And can you hear where you're stopping at? Do you know how you're how you're doing that? No. No. Uh are you saying what you want to say? Oh, um I see. Mm. -mm. You know, when I was growing up, my parents raised me with the belief that talent would always make itself known. It would always find a way to be discovered. I don't believe that's true. I've seen a lot of people who have never been discovered. And I think there are probably a lot of artists that we've never even heard of. And I think there are even more people who have never discovered their own talent. And uh, you can't make these kind of just simple statements about humanity. Uh, which seems as though it's all predestined and there's no work that we have to be doing on ourselves. And I do think that that is revolutionary in terms of what a learning process is.